the TID H8 might be the best option for new ham radio operators as they start their journey. Let's have a look. A lot of people, myself included, are going to opt for a Baofeng radio. They're cheap and plentiful. You just have to learn how to use Chirp software, which can be a little bit of a pain. You know, when when I first started in the the ham radio journey, I picked up a, a Baofeng radio, not that one in particular, but I've got a couple now. And the learning curve I found to be a little bit steep, as in at that time there were updates to Windows that were going on, and there were certain cables that worked with certain versions of Windows and others that didn't, and uh, I, I found that to be a little bit challenging. Now, as anything, once you learn how it works, it becomes a lot easier, right? So once you figure out which cables work with which versions of Windows and how to get the hang of the Chirp software, then it becomes much more easy. Now, the TID radio, one of the benefits or one, one of the features that the TID radio has that others do not is it comes with Bluetooth and it is what I would consider a budget radio. These these sell for about 50, somewhere between 50 and 60 bucks, I believe, on Amazon. And I'll, I'll send a, a, a link down here in the description. The advantage to this one is you can program it via Bluetooth and a phone app, which I spent some time figuring out and got that kind of completed and got that sorted out. What I found was there is a little bit of uh, glitchiness, I suppose, with the software. And I don't know if it's with the, uh, the app software and or the radio, but I spent a little bit of time trying to figure out how that all works. Uh, here goes the software here. I don't know if my phone's going to show up. Um, good on the uh, on the screen there but you'll see you know you you connect the radio to the phone app it is going to want you to create a you know a login and password and it's going to want your location permissions i didn't so much care about that because this is a secondary device that i don't use as my phone so uh, you can know my location all at once it's going to remain in one place i don't take this out but a little bit of uh, hankiness, I suppose, with the app. It took me a couple of few minutes and a, a couple different tries to get the phone app to talk to the radio. And then once I got it connected, um, first couple times I tried to read the data from the radio. Uh, it didn't want to work properly. And uh, But once I got it connected, got it figured out, I found that it works pretty good. Now, the learning curve... I think is going to be for new people uh, much less steep than with the Baofeng and Chirp software and whatnot. Nowhere near as much learning curve as a DMR radio. That's a far more steep learning curve, although it's worth learning. Um, but what I will say is the app, once you figure it out, is pretty slick. And I was able to figure it, this out for the first time in a matter of you know 20 30 minutes i was up and rolling and, and got this radio programmed which i think most newcomers are not going to be able to accomplish with a baofeng radio and chirp software i know the baofeng radios can be programmed manually but god talk about a pain in the butt right so the one thing i will say about this radio and it's it's not very it's not very intuitive you know the the software and uh, the app are, are not intuitive in, in the way they function. It's a, 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 little bit, a little bit blinky, I suppose you could say. Um, one of the things that I found super helpful with uh, the phone here, or the, the radio here, is if you click through the menu, it, it gives the same confirmations and sounds as a Baofeng radio. They probably use the same software for the, for the voice stuff, and you can see it does have a screen timeout. The battery life on this thing is phenomenal on top of the fact that this is advertised as a 10 watt radio and I've seen some people do some testing on it and it's just about 10 watts so pretty good pretty good power for uh, what I would consider a budget radio I mean between 50 and 60 bucks you can have one shipped to your front door 
I went for the clear case one because it's kind of kind of cool. I mean, I don't have any other radios with with this with a case like that, so a little different. What I noticed though is after I programmed it, the channel names were not coming up on the screen there. You know, so it'll have the frequency uh, displayed on the the top there, and then on the bottom you can see it has a, an A and B frequency where it's just going to repeat you know your same frequency that that is displayed in the main in the main screen there what I found was if you flip through the menu let's see here you can choose to display the name or the frequency in the bottom of the screen there so once I figured that out then it was like okay now now it's telling me which repeaters or, or which uh, names are for that channel, right? Which you can customize, which is pretty cool. You can manually program frequencies in here as well as go to, um, let's see, the repeater list. Let's see if I can get back to that. So essentially, once you're in the app, you can click on this right here, repeater list, and it's going to give you a list of all the repeaters nearby, and that's why it, it is asking for your location permission. So it can give you a list of repeaters, which you can go by here and sort by distance uh, or by frequency or, or by location, and you can, you can set however many miles you want distance to, to search for repeaters. One thing I noticed in the list of repeaters here is they do repeat themselves a little bit so you kind of have to pay attention to um, whether or not you are choosing the same repeaters to program in the radio over and over again but it's kind of cool you just press import on each repeater and then you can choose a channel to import that repeater to and then as you go through the list it saves in in your your import list here It'll put a check mark next to the channel that you want to program into. And then as you go down the list, the channels that you've already chosen will be checked in the box there. So it's, it's intuitive in that sense. What I found not intuitive is once you press import, right, and then you go back to this screen right here, it doesn't really show you much of anything um, until you press the right button down there, the blue one, the bottom right. Um, it took me a minute to figure that out because it, you know, as you close out the, the repeater list, it's basically just going to bring you back to the exact same screen that it was on before. So I left my first five channels open so that I can program them to uh, custom channels that I use for uh, various purposes. but. You know, at the end of the day, the learning curve on this was steep. Like I said, I figured this out in 20, 30 minutes. I got this thing programmed, which I don't think a newcomer will be able to do with a Baofeng and Chirp software. The one thing I will say that is going to be a benefit of learning Baofeng radios and Chirp software is once those files are saved in your radio, you can essentially copy and paste those into different radios, whether they're uh, Baofeng or, or whatever. So long as they play nice with Chirp software, uh, you ought to be able to program different radios with the same files, so all your radios will have the exact same channels and whatnot. If, if this has that capability, I'm not sure because I only have the one, the one TID radio, but I will say, this is worth considering for someone who's just getting into ham radio, who doesn't necessarily want to spend tons of time learning programming and whatnot. Um, you know, it's, it's absolutely legal to get a ham radio, program it, and listen. You just can't press the PTT button. You can't talk on it, right? Unless you're on, uh, you know, uh, FRS frequencies, which this technically, you shouldn't be transmitting on FRS frequencies because it transmits with too much power. Uh, as per FCC guidelines, I know not everybody cares about the rules, but that being said, you know, 
the TID radio is a good option for beginners. I, I can't say that I hate it so far. Uh, I've been using it for a little while here. It's got good audio. It's got good reception. I found my uh, transmission reports, um, you know, sound quality from uh, users on the other end. You know, I've got good good signal reports, good, uh, good audio reports. I don't have a whole lot to complain about. And it transmits at roughly twice the power as a Baofeng. You know, even though it's going to cost a little bit more, I think the the learning curve being a lot less steep, as well as the you know the um, ha it having twice as much power as a Baofeng. You know, I think I think that's a great I think that's a great uh, gateway drug for people to consider. You know, because it's inevitable as you get into ham radio and all things related that you will inevitably end up with tons of radios uh, and become divorced and also poor from buying so many radios. So that being said, there's plenty of other reviews about the TID radio. There's also a couple other really cool radios out right now. Uh, but I think for the ease of use and the, the learning curve being so easy with this radio, I think it's a solid performer. In fact, this is now my, uh, my go-to radio, at least for the time being. Um, it, it's turned out to be a winner, you know, with great battery life, like really, really great battery life. Um, nice color screen on it, as well as the ability to program it easily via Bluetooth, just on the go whenever you want. I think that's, that's a really good radio that should be considered for anyone, whether a uh, beginner or, or even someone who's experienced in ham radio. I think that's a winner considering the price. You know, a lot of people are going to scoff at the, the idea of, you know, Chinese HT radios and whatever, you know, if it works, it works, you know, it, it ain't dumb if it works, right? So hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, and uh, I'll put a link in the in the description there for for the TID radio. Uh, I do recommend the Gen 2, right? There were some problems with the first, the first iteration of the TID radio, the first uh, the first generation had a, a few different problems. This is the second gen radio, uh, which definitely you want to you want to get that one. It also, I believe, comes with a programming cable if you wanted to learn uh, how to program it on your PC. I have not done that yet. I've just used the I've just used the app, and it's it's working fine. You know, a little bit hinky, kind of. You know, uh, I don't know if it's Chinese radio and or Chinese software problems, but once you get it figured out. It's really slick, and I can't say that I hate it. So, hope you all enjoyed the video. Whiskey 6, enjoy.